This device taught me to find the healthiest diet for my body. If you've ever struggled with eating healthy, you know how hard it is just to get through the day. Each of us respond differently to food, and after using the Level CGM for 100 days, my diet will never be the same. But why did I decide to try a CGM in the first place? For three main reasons. Life is short, there's a lot of things that I want to achieve, and I realize that if I don't have stable energy throughout the day, it gets really hard to be productive and focus on the work at hand. So finding stable energy throughout the day based on my diet is really critical to achieving my big goals in life. Second is physical performance. I know that if my glucose levels are low, I don't have the energy to perform at my peak, whether I'm trying to hit a higher strength training level or I'm trying to run longer and farther than ever before. I'm currently training for a sub five minute mile, so I know that when I'm getting into these intensive training days, I have decent and stable glucose levels. And lastly, longevity. I have a lot of friends as well as family members who either have pre-diabetes or diabetes. For me, it's about understanding how my diet and lifestyle impacts my glucose, so hopefully I can be ahead of the game and prevent any potential long-term health challenges. Now, how does all of this work? When you sign up at Levels, you have the choice to either use the Freestyle Libre or the Dexcom. Both options are great. One is gonna use Bluetooth, whereas the other one you need to manually scan via NFC every eight hours. And both of them will send your glucose data to the Levels app, and then inside the Levels app, you'll input your meals, exercise, and sleep, and you'll be able to correlate your lifestyle behaviors to your glucose values. And then depending on the brand, this chip will stay inside your arm for 10 to 14 days, after which you'll remove and replace it with a new one. And then lastly, you need to be prepared for lifestyle changes. So whether that's scanning the chip every couple hours, inputting your meals and exercise sleep, or being mindful of the chip inside your arm. So when it comes to putting on clothes, swimming, showering, rubbing your arm against hard surfaces, these can all potentially cause the device to come out. So it's just about being a little bit more mindful because part of it is inside you and part of it is outside of you. It sounds freaky, but it's actually not. So what are the key features? The first one is the metabolic health panel. And you can sign up for this. They'll send a phlebotomist to your home. They'll draw blood from you and extract data. What's the data useful for? Well, one thing that I found really interesting was the fasting insulin. Most of you might know fasting glucose because that can tell you if you're within a good boundary, pre-diabetes or et cetera. Fasting insulin might be a faster marker to see how your glucose is trending. So when I did my I quit sugar video and then I binged on sugar for four days, my fasting insulin skyrocketed. Whereas fasting glucose can take up to three months to change. So it's another metric that provides a tighter feedback loop to let you know if your diet and lifestyle is actually helping improve your life. And the results also provide a list of other things right here that you might get at your primary care doctor when you do a blood test. What I think is really valuable about that is they'll give you like an optimal range so that way you can see, hey, am I within the optimal range for this specific value? And if not, you can speak to your doctor or someone at levels to understand how to change your diet and lifestyle to get into the optimal state. And the last thing is the daily metabolic report. This is an email that you can turn on and off and it'll send you your average glucose, your optimal range, your variability, and a whole bunch of other information. And it's just another way to get kind of like a daily report in terms of how are your lifestyle, diet, exercise behaviors impacting your glucose values throughout the day. And what I really like about it is it just reassures what you see in the app in an email form. So if you like to have a daily summary of your stability score for each meal that you ate, whether it's like, hey, maybe you should eat more of this or less of this, it's a great way to consume that information in just a different format. Now, what is it like using the app? In this moment right now, you do need two separate apps. The first one is the Libre app, if you're using the Freestyle Libre. And what you do is you'll go ahead and initialize the sensor, and then you need to scan it every eight hours. How you do that is you open the app, you tap scan sensor, and then you just place the top of your phone on top of the sensor on your arm, and then it downloads the data and sends that to the Levels server. So this app is just used for scanning your Libre via NFC. Next is the Levels app. This is where you will view all your CGM data, as well as input your meals, exercise, and any other notes. If you do have a sleep tracker, it'll automatically input your start and end sleep times. If you have a fitness tracker, it'll automatically input your workouts. So I use the Apple Watch, it writes everything in Apple Health, and it gets all my times and stuff into this app. So I don't need to worry about exercise and sleep, I just need to input my meals. And how I do that is I press the plus sign, I can either input a past meal that I inputted previously, I can go ahead and type something new if I want, or I can select a photo from my album, and what's really neat is if the photo was from a certain time, so right now it's 4.33, I took this photo about an hour ago, it'll update the time date to the time of that photo, and then I can say what it is, so this meal was a sleep meal, and then I hit done, and now it's gonna save that into my log. I can go into that meal, and it's gonna say either awaiting glucose, if I haven't had enough time to understand how my glucose has impacted after eating that, or if it's been enough time, it'll give me a stability score in terms of once I ate the meal, two hours later, how did my body respond? Green and 10 is the best, whereas red and one is the worst. And then on a daily basis, you'll get this big circle right here, which can define 
How stable has your glucose been throughout the day today? Ideally, the more green you have in the circle, the better it is. If you wanna see historical data, you can go under my data and you can see all your historical data in terms of how many spikes did you have that day, your spike time, and whether it was a good day, no spikes, etc. And you can also see all the meals that you've had in the past. So I have meals from like two years ago inputted in here and it'll give me the stability scores. I can go ahead and search all the meals. I can sort them right by the worst meals that I've had as well as exercises. And then finally my metabolic health panel results. I can see all that information here. I wanna see trends, so levels, if we can add trends from that data, that'd be really, really cool. But all of my blood work information is in here and I can see my cholesterol, triglycerides, fasting insulin, right? And under the My Data tab, it's really interesting to be able to see, oh, how long was my spike time? How many spikes did I have? So on one day, maybe there was only two spikes in 12 minutes, so my body was able to regulate and come back to normal, whereas other days, there was two spikes, but my spike time was an hour and 15 minutes. So whatever meal that was caused my glucose to spike and stay up for a longer period of time. And then other days, there were no spikes. So what did I do on those days? How can I repeat that behavior and keep that more consistent? Next, Apple Health integration. So Levels will actually read all of this information from your Apple Health. If you have any other devices that write that information, Levels will be able to pull it. Here I can see kind of my spikes throughout the day, where I was peaking at, how much. So about 18 hours of this day, I had a stable blood glucose, whereas the rest I did not. This day was 19 hours. I can even pull out my sleep report to see how my glucose was throughout my sleep. And then if you want to get a metabolic health panel, you can do that right over here. And if you want to connect with a nutritionist, this is a new feature. I haven't tried it yet, but they will be able to provide advice and input on your data inside of your Level CGM app. Now, how did the Level CGM change my life after these 100 days? The biggest thing was I used to use this meal service that was like labeled for athletes, labeled as healthy, and every time I would eat it with the CGM on, my glucose would massively spike and then it would crash. And I was like, hmm, this is maybe why I have like a spurt of energy right after I eat, and then I just get really exhausted in the evening. So I ended up canceling that meal service and not using it anymore. And that's not the only thing. There are a lot of foods that I thought were healthy, but actually weren't that good for you. For example, orange juice, the fruit yogurts, the ones with the little like strawberries on them, takeout foods and processed foods. I stopped eating a lot of these things as much as possible because I realized it wasn't actually healthy for me. And that's where the biggest value for me came in. It's kind of like this accountability device where you wear it, you log the food that you eat, so you build awareness about what you're eating. And then two, it gives you a tight feedback loop in terms of what's your stability score based on this meal. So when it's in the green zone, I know, okay, that's a good thing. I should keep eating it. When it's in the red zone, I'm like, hmm, maybe I should think about what this does to my body and try to eat that less often. And after getting all that data, there was five key learnings that I realized. One, sleep. Sleep is so important. If you don't get good sleep, it's going to cause any meal, whether it's good or bad, to spike more than it usually does. Two, stress and cortisol. If I have a stressful day, whether it's mental or physical, it is more likely that my glucose is going to spike that day. Three, the order of which I eat my macros as well as the meal composition. So I try to always have a fat or protein whenever I eat that usually helps slow the digestion of carbs and thus minimize the spike of glucose. And then when it comes to the order, I typically try to eat the protein first and then the carbs after that for exercise. You don't have to go do a HIIT workout right after you eat, which could be good, but even just a 10 to 15 minute walk after you eat. So anytime I get lunch with a friend or I eat my meal with anybody else, I'd be like, hey, let's go for a walk. It's just great for getting outside as well as minimizing the time under your glucose curve. And third, time of day. Typically in the evening when melatonin is secreting, your glucose is gonna spike much higher. So I realized that when I eat a high sugar content food in the evening, my glucose will spike much higher than if I do it in the morning. So nowadays I try to have brownies for breakfast rather than for dinner dessert. I'm just kidding, I don't have brownies that often. Or do I? And why do I incorporate these key learnings into my life? According to the Levels website, poor metabolic health is associated with worse brain function, no energy, awful memory, low mood, poor skin health, fertility challenges, and higher risk for chronic diseases. And those are things I don't want. So that negative visualization reminds me and keeps me in check to make sure that I have good metabolic health. So what are the downsides of actually using a level CGM? The first one is the effort required to actually incorporate this into your life. It's not like a put this device on and magically it changes your life. It requires work from your end as well. So first you have to put the device on, take it off every 14 days and replace it. Second is logging your meals, exercise and sleep. So it's using your phone and the app a lot throughout the day. Third is looking at the data and understanding, okay, is this good or bad for me? And then making a decision on stopping certain behaviors and incorporating more new behaviors. And some of the ways I wish that they would make this process easier is adding like an Apple Watch app. So that way I could log my food instantly from the Apple Watch and not have to worry about pulling out my phone. Levels, I wish that you would just write the glucose values to Apple Health because that can be extremely valuable to pulling analytics into other apps.
apps. And third, I hope that they merge all the apps that you need to make this happen. Right now you need one app for your glucose values and a second app to input all your data. After using the level CGM for 100 days, is it worth your money? When it comes to price, it's $1.99 for the yearly membership, so that way you can have the app, and then you need to buy the glucose monitors separately. It's $1.99 a month for each of the glucose monitor brands, depending on which one you choose. And that's a hefty price for some people, so it's a matter of, are you trying to find stable energy levels? Is optimizing your nutrition really important to you? And are you willing to invest to change all these things, not only with your money, but also your time? For me, it was really critical to take full control of my diet and nutrition, so that's why I decided to invest in it in the first place. I've found that maybe you don't need to have this every single month, but doing it every couple months, maybe once a quarter or twice a year, can be valuable. Understand how your diet impacts your lifestyle now, make those changes, and then retest as things change over time. If you do plan to buy one, use my affiliate link below. That helps support the channel. And if you haven't yet, go watch my video where I compare every single CGM brand linked right here. Because we love data.